Okay, so now uh, let's look at two simple examples. I already gave you all the analytics for these two examples, uh, which are written down here again. So uh, I can skip over this and just go to the implementation. And uh, as I said, it used the integral sync function. So you can look at this, I give you the program, but uh, I just checked that what I have here, what uh, Python computes is, uh, is in fact uh, the integral of the sync function and you see it is. So I did a numerical der <laughs> derivative here. So, and this is what I wanted to show you. Now um, I have let uh, we take g as the characteristic function of the unit interval from minus one to one. And uh, we look at the omega band limited version of that function. That means we assume that we can measure the Fourier transform of g for psi smaller or equal to um, absolute value of psi smaller or equal to omega and uh, do the inverse Fourier transform. So that's the approximation to G that we can then get. And uh, I've written this down here for several, for several values of omega, omega equal to 5, 25, and 100. And you see the corresponding uh, approximations here. Omega equal to 5 is we can only measure a very small portion of the Fourier transform of the unit interval. And doing the inverse Fourier transform, this would be the blue uh, function would be our approximation. And you see that it's very smooth. It uh, does not represent the fact that we have really an edge in a discontinuity in uh, uh, in the function g so that gets more or less completely lost it looks very smooth uh, if we take omega equal to 25 um, then uh, we get a much better representation we have a lot much we have uh, um, um, a larger portion of the Fourier transform that we can measure. Taking the inverse Fourier transform, we arrive at the orange curve, which at least has this jump over here almost represented. Uh, it still wiggles around over here, but um, well, this is this more or less looks like uh, the uh, unit, uh, the uh, characteristic function of the unit sphere. And if we take omega equal to 100, that approximation becomes even better. But note that, um, as I said, this is an excellent rep uh, this is an excellent um, approximation in the L2 sense. But uh, it's not a good approximation in the C infinity sense. Because if you, if you look over here, then you find that over here you have large peaks uh, in the orange and in the green representation. So if you take the infinity norm, then uh, the orange and green um, um, the orange and green approximations are even worse than the blue one, right? Uh, maybe not really, but over here at least they are, right? Because the wiggles over here are much larger. That's called the Gibbs effect. Um, that uh, even with a high frequency, even if we can measure a high, large portion of the Fourier transform, uh, we get uh, a large errors in the C infinity norm. And uh, so that's the reason why engineers usually do not take the pure um, um, uh, band limited version as I defined it, but they still make it a little bit more, a little bit smoother. So they get rid of the wiggles up here. And also in the implementations, in the two implementations, we'll see that this has to be done. Otherwise, we get bad errors. Okay, so uh, these are three representations, three approximations to the unit interval to the characteristic function of the unit interval for different values of omega. And now we'll do exactly the same thing for the delta distribution. Okay, and that's a little bit more, uh, let me, that's uh, um, maybe a little bit um, more um, boring. Uh, because, uh, as I said, then if we do that, if we have um, um, a peak at zero, then this will show up in the signal as just the sync function. And uh, this is the sync function 
plotted for various version for various values of omega omega equals to 5 25 and 100 and uh, again i need to look a little bit closer so uh, i would take this portion yes and um you see the blue one is uh, uh, the approximation to the delta distribution. Remember, the delta distribution is a function, a distribution that has its support only at zero. So it should be inf infinite at zero and zero everywhere else. And uh, so the approximation that we get for omega equals to five is very, very smooth. So uh, this is not really a good representation of uh, the character of the delta distribution. The orange one looks a little bit better and the green one really has a large peak at zero already. It also has these wiggles over here, but Anyway, uh, it looks like uh, the uh, green one, where we have a large portion of the Fourier transform actually measured, gives us a good approximation of the delta function, which of course doesn't really exist. Okay, um, so uh, as I already said, uh, if we have a measurement device that uh, measures only part of the Fourier transform, then um, this is what we get if we, if we put in a peak at zero. So this is actually what we measure, what we see uh, finally as the approximation for um, uh, in our final result. Now, um, the question is, what is the resolution? I mean, assume that uh, a doctor wants to recognize in his image a tumor of given size. So probably, so there's, uh, I think there's a, um, a fixed size at just at this point, I don't remember whether it's one millimeter or five millimeters, but um, uh, the uh, constructor of a computer tomography device has to prove that that uh, the um, that the device he makes is able to represent tumors of a given size. Um, now, let's assume that the uh, tumor is arbitrarily small, then it will show up uh, in the CT device, in the CT image, as something like this over here in two dimensions, right? I'm doing this in one dimension here. Um, so the question is, what's the resolution uh, of this um, of this peak over here? So uh, we would like it to um, we would like it to represent the tumor, but obviously it, it shows up something like this over here. And the question is, can we really um, can we recognize the tumor out of that? And uh, the engineers have a very nice way of defining that. And uh, uh, the idea behind that is if this function is too smooth, then uh, the image of that tumor will just vanish in the surrounding, right? There, there will be, it will not be a single tumor at one point and then there's nothing else because in that case, it would be easy to recognize because if there's something, then that's the tumor. But there's a lot of things around and we need to be able to differentiate our small peak from the other peaks that are everywhere around. That's the liver, that's everything else around. So um, the nice way of defining resolution is the following. Let's assume that we do not have one peak, but we have two peaks close to each other. And so that's uh, the, the two peaks that I have over here. So I assume that I have one peak over here. So there's a delta distribution at this point, and there's a delta distribution at this point over here. Now, these two will show up in images like the orange curve over here and the blue curve over here. But of course, these are not individual. All we can see finally in the image is the sum of these two. Okay. And uh, oh, I should also mention that using this slider, I can using this slider <laughs> using this slider <laughs> i can change the distance between these two delta distributions right so there are two peaks in the image and i can change the distance between these two using this slider Okay, and of course I cannot uh, in the image see these two individuals, but I can only see the sum of these 
two curves. So let me do that. Okay, now I see the green one is the sum of the two. And I have it at the point. So, okay. Okay, so uh, now I have these two individual peaks. So uh, the orange one is here, the blue one is here. Uh, but what I really see in the image is the sum of the two curves, and that's the green one. Am I able uh, to uh, deduce the locations, at least roughly, of uh, the two delta distributions? Yes, absolutely. Um, the green curve has one um, uh, maximum over here, one maximum over here, and that's more or less the uh, positions of uh, the the points that I have in the, that I have in the image that I really have in the image. Okay, so that's nice. So we are able to separate these two delta distributions. Now let me make this distance smaller and you see now I'm moving these two together and you see what's happening to the sum it gets more the this over here gets more and more flat at, at and at some point the sum has no does not have two individual maxima but now it only has one so um the two delta distributions which were separate, if they're too close to each other, then they cannot be identified as single distributions, but they all form just one big blob. And that is what is defined by engineers as the resolution of an imaging system. So um, we, if we get too close, then these will just melt into one point and the point where that happens that's the resolution of the imaging system and i think that's somehow quite reasonable note uh, that of course using uh, uh, our um, our terminology here this is immediately um, connected to omega band limited functions. So uh, if um, um, a device can only reconstruct an omega band limited version of some function, then its, re um, is, then its resolution is given by a constant times one over omega. I think the constant is something around four. Okay, so what we can deduce from, from this is if we want to be able to see details of a certain size, then that immediately translates into we need to have, uh, we need to be able to reconstruct omega band limited functions for omega larger than something. Otherwise, they, the, um, the uh, delta peaks that we have will just melt into each other. So resolution translates into band limited functions and uh, that's what we are going to use up from here on.